The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship today. A blessed Mother's Day to all of you moms this morning. We have pink and white carnations for you to take home with you on the way out today. I send my blessings to all of the moms. Uh, I want to thank um, Mark who's setting in today. Not setting in, he's Ed and Beverly are out for the weekend and Mark is here. Thank you, Mark. I want to thank uh, Pastor Rex for supplying for me last week uh, as I was on a Via de Cristo weekend. I want to say welcome back to uh, Chris and Dale Willman are here with us. Woo the good news is Jesus, but we also celebrate good news when you guys come back. So we're so glad to see you. Some holes can get filled now and things. That, and we're glad to have you back. You should find a pew pad somewhere there in your pew, usually on the aisle uh, side. If you could sign in, please. I want to welcome uh, Debbie Hackers here from the other side uh, at Faith, uh, worshiping with us today. So welcome, Debbie. Good to see you this morning. We had a successful closed closet yesterday. Many volunteered, for which we give God thanks and praise. It's the only one uh, in May due to the, due to the race. So continue to pray uh, for that closed closet and and be in touch with Pat if you can help in some ways during the week when she works to set things up. Speaking of the race, as you know, well, uh, the, we don't worship on the 28th. We can't get in. Uh, so our, our uh, Memorial Day uh, race day service will be that prior Thursday, the 25th at 7 p.m. Thursday, the 25th for our uh, race Memorial Day weekend worship service. We have much to be in prayer uh, for today. As you know, Suzanne DeBoer uh, had a fall and, and has broken her hip, uh, recovering from surgery at Hendricks County. She's headed over to uh, an adjoining uh, rehab facility today. So keep John and Suzanne uh, in your prayers. Uh, Tony Goodell, I don't see them today. They like the 11 o'clock when it switches and they'll come to faith for worship. But he was in the hospital with a fall as well and doing good this week. And then we continue to pray for Bobby Moore, also dealing with cancer and the subsequent fallout from uh, chemo. Uh, pray for Bobby, her son. John was readmitted to the hospital again this week for complications. So we have much to pray for in our family of faith. And certainly we give thanks to God for our council and they'll be installed later in the service today. We're thankful for their service to the Lord. Taking a moment now for a breath, let's begin our time of worship. Please stand as you're able and we'll sing Baptized in Water. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You. The word is near you. And in your, if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord 
and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Faith comes from what is heard. be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Acts chapter 17. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Anthonians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown This I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, And he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live. So they would go search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we lived and move and have our being. As given some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals, while God has overlooked the times of human ignorance. Now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man who is he has appointed, and of this has given us insurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read responsively selected verses from Psalm 
66. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried, and you have just silver as tried. <clears throat> You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. Those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. Come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. Blessed be God who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld unfailing love from me. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But you're in hearts, in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is within you. Yet to do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, baptism which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Friends, it's the Holy Gospel according to St. John in the 15th chapter. If you love me, says the Lord, you'll keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. 
This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know I'm in the Father and you are in me. They that have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by the Father. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Invite uh, children to come forward for a moment with me. Way up here. Come on up. <laughs> Come on up, girls. Good to see you. Good morning. How are you? Are you good today? What's special about today? Anything? It, you ate yogurt? Is that, that is special. Yes, it is. Is there anything else going on today, Miss Lexi? Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. It's a special day for moms. What I wanted to share today is the good news of this Bible. It tells us all about God's love. It's a book that tells us about God's love. What I wanted today is for you to write a book. Come on up. I wanted you guys to write a little booklet out for your moms that tells about how much you love your moms. Okay? So just like the book of the Bible tells us of God's love. Good morning. Come on. Hi. How are you guys? Good morning. Hi. So what I decided to do today is give you a little booklet, and today I'd like you to make out and color it and put notes in here and pictures and give it to mom today as a little book that tells how much you love your mom, okay? What color would you like? Yeah. There you go. Take it. You can take it. Take a little booklet. You're gonna, today you're going to color in it. You're going to write in it. You're going to put pictures in there and tell how much you love your mom, okay? God loves you and so do we all. Thank you for coming up, okay? Have a good day. It's okay, here. <laughs> Here's some little booklets for them. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for coming up, you guys. <laughs> Might want to stay and hang out. <laughs> I missed a couple things. I just wanted to, first of all, say good morning to our uh, Facebook family of faith. And thank you, Lisa, for operating the system today. Uh, Jim and I chatted in the hallway just before this, and we forgot about Mother's Day. So the faith formation tonight will just be canceled, and we'll start the Book of Acts next week on Sunday nights at 7. You're more than welcome to join us, of course. And then at the Vita Cristo weekend, when you go, one of the highlights, for me anyway, is they tell jokes. We say short clean and funny and after the meals we share no it's not me it's the jokes short clean and funny and and this one is in the Vita Cristo history books and I just have to share it today it's about a young man who's walking through town and he comes by a bar and he sees that they're advertising that they need a bouncer at the bar and he's a short guy you know small in stature but he goes in to talk to the bartender and says, you know, I, I'd like to be a bouncer. I'd like to apply for that job you have. And the bartender said, well, you're so short and small. I don't know. We need somebody who's tough. Somebody who can really handle being a bouncer. And the guy says, well, I may be small, but I'm tough. I was out hunting one time and had an accident. Got my arm caught in a, near a boulder and I had to cut it off. And I sewed my arm back on. That's how tough I am. And the bartender said, wow, that's incredible. Well, you're hired. You have the job. And the guy says, all right, all right. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> he sewed his arm back on himself. <sighs> Stay with your day job. I love that. <clears throat> well, another thing I love, friends, is called spiritual direction. Some of you may have heard the term spiritual direction. Uh, in some, particularly in Catholic churches, they'll have somebody on the staff that's a spiritual director. Uh, I've been through a program many years ago at the monastery. The upshot of what I learned in spiritual direction is the widening, the opening of how we understand God. 
a widening or an opening of how we understand God. We did a number of things in that two-year program to explore and experience God in writings, in, in drawings. In we, at one, one day, we walked the grounds looking for images of God and to write about that and to draw. And, and uh, we read many, many books on spirituality. And one of the interesting images that they talked about in a couple of the classes was this mothering image of God. Think about this with me a moment. The mothering image of God. It's okay. We have this patriarchal language in the scripture. We use father and, and I get it. But also God is more than just father but mother as well along with brother and so on. But the mothering image of God is where I want to have us think about it today. The mothering image of God. The nurture. The care. The concern the love that comes pouring forth in a maternal, tender way. Matthew and Luke talk about the passage where Jesus says, like a mother hen, I long to gather all my people under my wings. The psalmist and Isaiah talk a lot about God as a mother protecting uh, her children. The maternal image really shows uh, up about the issue around God and God's love and care for us. And I thought that seemed appropriate on this Mother's Day uh, as we celebrate you moms that are here today. It's a special day. We've been honoring Mother's Day since 1908, 115 years. I've shared with you before that my own mother passed in, in 2014. I know for many of us, our mothers have gone on before us. I hope and I pray that there are good images of your mother that you can hold on to and forgiveness for what may not have been. Uh, I loved my mom deeply. It's been uh, almost 10 years now that she's been gone. I think about her as my best friend. And even though my family was not religious, quote unquote, uh, she had, I think, a sense of faith. Uh, I remember fondly in my home growing up a picture of Jesus on the wall. And we were, uh, at, as I grew up, we were Christers, uh, Christmas and Easter, we call it, uh, in attendance, as many of us can understand that. I didn't want Mother's Day to go by without just honoring moms today and thinking about the maternal image of God. Statistics show, if you can count the internet as a, as a source, that there are some 82 and a half million moms uh, in the United States. I don't know how they could keep up with that if babies are born every day, but two billion moms worldwide. Did you know, moms, that the average mom changed 7,300 diapers by the time the child is two? God bless you, mothers. I remember doing that, and it took, it was a lot of work, I can't imagine. And so in those statistics, there are more phone calls made today than on any other day in the year. Today is the third highest selling holiday for flowers on Mother's Day. In my mind, I was like, well, what's the other two? And I suspect Valentine's Day, maybe Christmas. Uh, a fetal heart rate goes up when the mother, mother's voice is heard. And uh, we know that uh, it's the busiest day for moms on Mother's Day for restaurants. We know that Ann Jarvis, during, a, uh, during and following the Civil War, made an effort to foster friendships with the mothers of the soldiers on both sides of that war. And she initiated uh, Mother Friendship Day Back in 1868, Ann Jarvis. Woodrow Wilson signed it into law in 1914 that the second Sunday in May would be Mother's Day. Another little quip I found online I thought was good. It's not easy to be a mother. If it were easy, fathers would do it. <laughs> Life doesn't come with a manual. It comes with a mother. It comes with a mother. The mothering and the maternal image of God takes us to the gospel lesson today. <clears throat> Jesus says, I will not leave you orphaned. I will not leave you alone. I will not leave you orphaned. And I will love you and reveal myself to you. God with us is a celebration for us every day, but especially today. I will not leave you orphaned. I will not leave you alone. The maternal image of the love and grace of God will surround you. The fathering image of the courage and the strength will be with you. And you'll never be left alone. And you'll go forward uh, sharing that love with others. 
never alone, never an orphan. I love the language. Another Bible translation calls it friends. I will be your friend. Peter writes today in our Acts passage that this Jesus, this gospel good news, that in him we live and move and have our being. In this Jesus, the maternal lover of our souls, we live and move and have our being. I just love that imagery. If you think about it a minute, Jesus is with us as we live, as we move day to day, moment by moment, God is with us. And we have our being in who we are by the gift of God in Christ. We are all individually loved and made, and what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus as our mother, as our father, as our brother. When I would go visit my mom in the nursing home, uh, one of the times she kind of surprised me <clears throat> was saying that they'd had a Christian singer in that morning and that she had requested, what a friend we have in Jesus. I left shocked that visit because I had no idea that she even knew that that was a hymn. It was never talked about in our family. But what a friend we have in Jesus, all our griefs to bear and all of our sins. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. It calls upon us then to give everything to God in prayer. The God who loves us, the God who walks with us, the God who will not leave us orphaned, the God who is all of our peace, hope, love, and joy. Oh, what peace we often forfeit because we don't take everything to God in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. I realize that on a day like today, there may be uh, challenges with your mother relationships. We all have that, I'm sure. There were times along the way, but we want to forgive and forget because mothers are human. We know that. But my mom, you know, used to say, and I've shared this with you before, but I think it's pertinent today because it just reminds me uh, what we're all about. <clears throat> in my last year uh, with her, as she was declining, I would often, as always I did, I would greet her at the end of a visit and give her a kiss and say goodbye and I love you. And just during my mom's last year of life, she would say, I loved you first. I loved you first. And I just always hung on to that in my life, having not heard that in my previous 50-some years. As I visited with my mom, I'd always find her by the aviary, the large indoor bird cage, if you're not familiar, watching the birds and rocking, and we rocked together. And on this particular day, I was, I was sure I wanted to read a devotion uh, and have a moment with her of uh, talking about God as best I could. And we were rocking there and, and watching the birds and, and chatting on this particular day. And I said, Mom, you know, God loved you first, right? You know that. God loved you first. And she smiled and, mm -hmm, that's right. God loved me first. God loved me first. And God loves you first, my friends. First, last, and always. Our God is love. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's stand as you're able and sing that great hymn of the church. What a friend we have in Jesus.
And now we share together our response to the word. In Christ, you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, <clears throat> on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up in your most holy faith. Pray the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power and love of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection... Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, our faithful companion, you promised to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Hear us, O oh God. All the earth sing praises to you. Grant your care to their creatures, plants, and places that are suffering, and equip us to respond to their song. Make us agents of restoration and refreshment for all your beloved creation. Hear us, O oh God. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to all who are oppressed and speak truth to power through your prophets. Hear us, O God. Amen. Nurturing Lord, you sent your spirit to grant us peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone, and to all who are sick or grieving. Hear us, O God. Amen. You hold us in your loving care. We pray for mothers and mother figures. Console all who long to be mothers, children estranged from their mothers, anyone grieving the death of a mother, and mothers who have lost a child. Support all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O oh God. Amen. Almighty God, you give life and breath to all things. We give thanks for the Apostle Matthias and all your saints. Sustain us by your love until we join the saints in glory. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated and invite the council to come forward for their installation. President Jan Smith, Jennifer Baker, <coughs> Lisa Gold, Nadine Coles, Jamie Shake, Susie Hinchin, 
Mark Pullman and Amanda Hunter. Come on up. Faith, oh no, come on up this, onto the uh, one step up, please, if you will, carefully. Face the cameras, because so everybody on Facebook can see you. Gonna slide down a little so you're out of the light, you guys. <laughs> These persons have been elected uh, by the St. Andrew's congregation into positions of leadership. St. Paul writes that there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but it's the same spirit who gives them. There are different kinds of serving, but it's the same Lord who has served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives to everyone ability for a particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in every person for the good of all. You've been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith reflect him in whose name we gather. You're to work together with other members of the congregation to see that the work and the worship of Christ are done, and that God's will is done in this community and in the whole world. You're to be diligent in your specific area of serving, that the one Lord who empowers you is glorified. You're to be examples of faith, active in love, to help maintain the life and harmony of the congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, are you ready to accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you've already been doing for a few months and have been elected and will continue to pray for each and every one in our congregation. If so, say yes by the help of God. Uh, thank you, because I didn't have a plan if you said no. Uh, now, people of God, we take responsibility as well. Will we support them, our elected leaders on the council, share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to us in all who are baptized to pray for them and to support them? If so, say yes by the help of God. I now declare you installed as council members of this congregation. God bless you with his Holy Spirit that you may prove faithful servants of Christ in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Loving and grace-filled God, thank you for the call to serve. Thank you for calling these council members to step up to lead the congregation. Have us always remember that we are here to serve and that you are serving us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And all God's people said together, Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's turn and share that peace with one another.
We thank you for your gifts of offering, and there is a, a plate on the way out if you have something to leave today for the service to the Lord. And we sing and stand as you're able, the offertory. <coughs> Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks It is indeed right. It's our duty and our joy that we should at all places and all times give thanks and praise to our almighty and merciful God for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Easter Lamb who forfeited himself and took away our sin and who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed with you, for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by the Holy Communion we may know that the unity that we share with all of your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and know Christ, broken and poured out for you, in a loving, maternal embrace. You may be seated.
Congregation, please stand as you're able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. pray. O gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and with this meal of grace, you've nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. And now the God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit and to live in new creation, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Children of the Heavenly Father, 781 is our sending song. Mm -hmm. 